Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Amo Ganvekar and I am currently doing MD radio diagnosis in Justice K. S. Eglet Charitable Hospital and Medical College. The topic of my presentation is anatomical variations of paranasal sinuses and in the CT scan and its association with the chronic sinusitis. Coming to the introduction, chronic sinusitis is a common pathology encountered in a day-to-day -day study. Anatomical variations in paranasal sinuses are more commonly found in uh, uh, such patients and it needs assessment. CT scan is an excellent modality for the evaluation of the anatomical variations and uh, as well as the paranasal sinuses and its pathology. It helps in assessment of the drainage of the sinuses, extent of the sinusitis, variations, and thus helps the surgeon in PES surgery, that is a uh, functional endoscopic sinus surgery. The study is conducted to correlate the anatomical variations and uh, its association with the pathophysiology of sinusitis. The aim of this particular study is to evaluate the anatomical variations in the patients with chronic sinusitis, to evaluate the pre uh, prevalence of sinusitis variants and uh, to assess its association with uh, chronic sinusitis, to likely evaluate the variations that contribute strongly to the disease process of the sinusitis, that is the pathophysiology of the sinusitis. Methods. Uh, in this retrospective study, 100 patients with clinical symptoms of uh, sinusitis who underwent CT scan in the past six months were included. Multi-axial unenhanced images of paranasal sinuses were obtained using 128-slice G spiral CT machine and later coronal and sagittal reformats were done. The anatomy of the paranasal sinuses were evaluated in both soft tissue window as well as bone window and the findings were tabulated. Inclusion criteria for this particular study was patients with clinical symptoms of rhinitis, nasal obstruction, and headache. And uh, the exclusion criteria was uh, patients with history of a paranasal sinuses, uh, paranasal sinus surgery, patients with uh, uh, sinonasal malignancy, and uh, patients with the history of road traffic accidents and uh, with uh, facial factors. Findings The parameters that were uh, particularly in observed uh, in the interest were. Uh, nasal turbinates, nasal septum deviation, sinuses involved and the extent of its uh, involvement, then ethmoid aid cells like uh, agar nasal cells, onodi cells and palar cells, and uh, spinoid sinus variations, so for example, pneumatization of the clinoid process, pterygoid process and uh, greater wing of the spinoid. So uh, the particular uh, the findings that were uh, tabulated uh, were uh, here you can see an axis section of uh, CT scan in the bone window, axis section of CT head in the bone window, showing the concha bullosa in the left middle turbinate. Concha bullosa can be of uh, two types. One is involving the turbinate, another one is involving the stroke of the turbinate. However, uh, the involving the turbinate is uh, the more common finding. And in the second image, you can see that there is hyperneumatization of the right spinoid sinus. Also, there is associated left maxillary sinusitis with uh, air fluid level which is uh, strongly suggestive of acute sinusitis. Uh, here we have a coronal image in a patient uh, with a coronal image of head in a bone window showing deviated nasal septum to the right. Uh, the, here the deviation is uh, rather mild, whereas uh, in the second image, you can see that there is cross deviation of uh, nasal septum to the left along with the bony spur. There is also bilateral maxillary sinusitis with the uh, near total uh, near total opacification of the right maxillary sinus. Here we have in uh, image one a case of sinusal polyposis with bilateral maxillary sinusitis. In image two, what we get to need see is a D-Lano type one optic nerve. D-Lano classified the optic nerves into four variants. This those are type one, wherein optic nerve is uh, adjacent to the spinoid sinus. Type two, where uh, the optic nerve is indenting the spinoid sinus. Type 3, traversing through the spinoid sinus, and type 4, the optic nerve lies adjacent to the spinoid sinus and the posterior ethmoid air cells. This becomes particularly of important uh, in the uh, space surgery and is a useful information for the surgeon. Then here we have Kiros type 2 olfactory fossa that is noted. Uh, Kiros again classified olfactory fossa into three types type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1, depth of the olfactory fossa is 1 to 3 mm. Type 2, 4 to 7, and type 3, 8 to 16 mm. 
The results uh, of this particular study were among the 100 patients evaluated, 30 patients, 30% uh, 30 of the patients showed conca bullosa. The incidence was more com most commonly seen in the middle terpene. Deviated nasal septum was seen in 44% of the patients. Some patients even had a bony spur abutting the nasal turbulence and the nasal wall associated. The incidence of sinusitis were more common in the maxillary sinus and frontal sinus. Fan sinusitis was noted in three patients and uh, spinal sinus hypernematization was noted in six patients. The conclusion which was finally drawn with this particular study was the study showed that the deviated nasal septum is a common finding in the patients with chronic sinusitis and can be considered significant contributing factor in the disruption of the normal mucociliary clearance. Conca bullosa is a common anatomical variant noted. However, mostly the patients are asymptomatic. The ethmoid sinus cells like Bonodi cells, agar nasal cells, and Haller cells may be incidentally found in patients with sinusitis, however, has no strong correlation. The knowledge of anatomical variations and its elaboration is indeed a useful tool for it can provide the surgeon with sufficient information for performing a safe endoscopic sinus surgery. Following were the references I used for this particular study. Thank you.